Coming up, it's the breakup the president cannot get over. Former FBI Director James Comey is making the rounds. He's promoting his new book and talking about an investigation that he has no new information on. So is it too soon? Plus, things are getting ugly on the Hill, and for once, it has nothing to do with politics. Coming up, why a local paper ditched its annual most beautiful issue. And later, a guy who got ghosted sent his date a bill for the dinner. And we're all divided on this over whether he was justified or a giant jerk. Like it or not starts right now. All right, hey, thanks for joining us with Guy Lambert and Brick McHenry. I'm Bram Weinstein. So, um, would you pay for dinner if the guy goes to do? What's up? Uh, if any guy tried to Venmo me for money, <laughs> I would. We all know how I am yeah. opinionated online. I would uh, let him know it. Uh, let's check what's trending this week besides making dates pay up. And first up, it's the Democrats getting the official award for sorest losers ever. The Democratic National Committee has filed a multi-million dollar lawsuit over the 2016 presidential election. They claim three parties conspired and colluded to steal the election from Hillary Clinton and make Donald Trump commander in chief. Named in the lawsuit, the Trump campaign, the Russian government, WikiLeaks. They did not comment why planet Earth wasn't named as a defendant as well. And this all comes before the special prosecutor investigating Russia's collusion claims has even finished up. So like it or not, don't we need just the facts first? Mm. My issue with this is actually, if I was a Democrat, I would want the party, I would want the DNC, which was pretty much bankrupted after former President Barack Obama. And that, that isn't a snide remark. That's according to their former chairwoman, Donna Brazile. They rigged it to nominate Hillary Clinton according to Brazil. So they have issues within the DNC with what happened there with Bernie Sanders. And if I was a Democrat- So they I, should sue each other. Right. No, I, 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 no, I would look at this and at say, yeah. why aren't you trying to bolster up the next candidate for 2020 to beat Donald Trump? Mm. Why aren't you focusing on Connor Lamb who took Trump mania PA 18 and he has a bright future instead of looking at the past? That's my thought on it. I don't wow. understand it. Yeah, is it weird that I kind of agree yeah. with you on this one? Uh, God, what's happening? Here? I don't know. Uh, you know, this is all known and void. As you stated, nothing is going to happen until Robert Mueller makes his decision. Why even waste the money? Now they're talking about the three stooges, Donald Trump Jr., uh, Jared Kushner, oh, and of course we can't forget about Roger Stone. Trump Jr. Yeah, I mean, come on guys. Don't we have other things we could talk about here? with regard to the Democrats. It sounds like they're trying to perpetuate a media cycle, which the Republicans have gotten good at, and they're not good at. Yeah. Yeah. Because this makes no sense. Do you want to do this lawsuit? Why don't you do it when you have some proof? It also, makes no sense to do that. Meanwhile, the RNC just had a record-breaking fundraising month in March of $13.8 million. Oh, you had to put that in there, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I'm just saying, focus on the future. Focus You're going to get my bill soon, too. Uh, speaking <laughs> of news cycles, uh, here's a novel idea. Why don't we let investigators investigate and let us know when they're done? Here's also a novel idea. Stop talking about incomplete novels. James Comey is on a media tour. He's discussing his book, which claims that President Trump didn't just exercise power, he performed an executive exorcism. The devil here is in the details. The problem is Comey doesn't know the details anymore, and Trump doesn't want any more details exposed. So like it or not, we don't know what we don't know here. Uh, I kind of like this a lot. One, of course, we're talking about the classified information that President Trump said that Comey is actually spilling the beans on. There's no classified information. He had to get the book approved by the FBI before it was published. Two, the second thing here. I like what Comey said about President Trump making a lot of Americans numb. If you think about it, President Trump is attacking a private citizen, now James Comey. Who does that? You can't do that as the President of the United States. And lastly, third, last but not least, you're probably going to talk about Comey talking about Trump's hair or his size of his hands. And other administrations, if too. You, yeah, he did do that. If you listen to him, he says, hey, guys, I'm an author. I need to describe what's going on around I me. I felt money. like him I going low made no point, though. But, but he the didn't larger point he was trying to make, if you were going to stay above board and say, I'm on a different level than you are, then you don't go after the guy's hands or hair. I think that was the one mistake that he has he made. He talked about Obama, too, yeah. being skinny. Yeah. <laughs> he did. 
hey, that's a good problem to have. Uh, I could work on that myself for the summer. No, I, I don't like it at all. A higher loyalty. The only thing that James Comey is loyal to is his bank account right uh, now. He wants to mm. sell books. It sold 200000 in pre-sales. And I don't like that he's just dished out all this information, both on Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, in addition to Donald Trump. Because where is that protection that we're supposed to have of the FBI? You know what I think it is? I think Trump is pissed somebody It went out off. the door when Trump fired him for no reason. But that's still not a way. That's like an X spilling all of your information. Like, it's just we'll not just classy. That. All right, let's get, let's all, let's calm down. Let's get some caffeine in us. All right, I think. Fired up. Things at a Starbucks in Philadelphia went from zero to venti in a hurry. One guy asked for a bathroom key. He was told he had to buy something first. He didn't. He and his friend slash business partner then held it and sat down, and that's when the store manager called the police, and they were arrested for trespassing. And that's when the chai hit the fan. And it's led to the company CEO to tell everyone to lay off the caffeine. I promise, only one more coffee pun. Like it or not, the barista needs to spill the beans on why they got all foamed up. <laughs> I don't, I don't like that they're making the diversity day on May 29th. First, it's the day after my birthday, so I'm going to be needing a lot of coffee. Second of all, I, I just think it, it's, it's corporate America overreacting to this. I thought the Starbucks swiftly handled it with their statement, and they fired the manager. I agree. I agree. I think, I think this was taken care of very quickly. Clearly a mistake yeah. was made. It looks terrible. It makes no sense. And I believe if those two guys were white, it would not have happened. Right. I don't know that, but I'm fairly certain. A lot of people that hang that out at Starbucks like all day. Yes, so a lot point. of people I do. I, I don't understand what happened here at all. This could have happened eating and everywhere. It could have happened at Target. could have happened at Walmart, for all we know. Mm -hmm. For the CEO to come out and apologize and to say, I'm sorry, is a big deal. Because of this, lost revenue expected to be $16 million. They made $22 billion last year. So he really didn't have to say, I'm sorry. He could yeah. have just carried on business. They're, as not, they're not losing that revenue from me. <laughs> Why does Diversity Day always happen after something like this? It's so many viewers though. are going to tweet me that they did not like that comment. No, they didn't. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> do, what do you think? Uh, don't believe everything you read just became don't believe everything you see or hear. Like it or not, the future of fake news is here, and we'll have the details. It's coming up next. He was just at the Verizon Center. He was? I was no. there. I'm sure it was a great concert. Is he hanging out at a Starbucks? <laughs> no, not. I'll have to ask. You know, every once in a while, we do have the urge to put fake words in Brit's mouth and use some cool but deceptive TV tricks to make it look like she really said that, but that would be wrong, right? Mm. Oscar winner Jordan Peele teamed up with BuzzFeed to make a new PSA about President Trump's favorite phrase, fake news, and how easy it is to fool people. Take a look at this. President Trump is a total and complete <laughs> Now, you see, I would never say these things, at least not in a public address, but someone else would. Someone like Jordan Peele. Peele and his production team, that was pretty cool and scary. They used Very. a combination of technology to make their video of the former president look really realistic. And while, of course, it had this comedic tone to it, it delivered a very serious message. So like it or not, you can't believe everything you see or read these days. The future is upon us. Wow, I can't wait to use Brit's face to say she loves Colin Kaepernick and see what happens <laughs> on Twitter with that one. That is really Gotta scary. the voice. Yeah, I mean, just to think that, you know, that's going to be happening day in and day out now. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what to say about that. I'm, I'm really kind of bothered I mean, I'll, by I'll it. say this. Like, they have access to some CGI and right. some things that most people would not. And it, would, it wouldn't be as obvious and seamless as the type of technological advances that Jordan Peele obviously has access to. But his point is very well made here because we're reading a lot of things and we're not sure how yeah. verified any of these things are. And clearly it can go so far as to putting words literally in someone's mouth and who knows where that goes. Well, and, and that's where all the issues with Facebook are. Re remember that photo of the Parkland students holding the Declaration of Independence? Mm -hmm. right. Or no, they weren't holding that. But then, and then they they photoshopped it to look like they were holding it and ripping it apart, or yes. you know, ripping apart the Constitution, and that's really sad. First, of all, on many levels, they're just 18 years old. Number one, 17, 18 years old. Number two, that it went viral. It went viral because when people want to see or hear something and it fits that narrative, I think now in society we've just said. Who really cares if it's real? You know, like movies had to put ratings on things. At yeah. some point, the internet is going to have to have some kind of accountability scale yeah. mm -hmm. where people can look at something and know what they're looking at, that it's verified as something that is real or came out of their mouths or was truly sourced. 
And I'm not sure we're there yet. And I don't know how you handle something as unwieldy as the World Wide Web. By the way, it took 56 hours for Jordan Peele in order to make that, that video. I would think this is really going to support your party, Britt, because, of course, we know the word of the year fake news or words. I and there say. are some journalists who get really self-righteous about using fake news. There are examples of fake news there or are. corrections, and I think that you should be able to call it out, just not blanket yeah. the term. Right. Let's just be careful about institutional places that made a mistake as opposed to people who are literally making yeah. fake news. All right. Can you use my voice as we go to break? Yes, <laughs> I, I Maybe. I haven't been able to... I, let me see if I can do an impression of you. We'll try that later. Stick around for that. And uh, if you were dying to know who the hottest people on the Hill are... You are out of luck because, like it or not, <laughs> ranking people by looks may be a thing of the past. Talk about all that coming up next. When you walk around the Capitol, you just think to yourself, there's a lot of hotties around here. <laughs> no. No? Not quite? No. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't gotten there yet? You're a bookworm. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Wear the sunglasses, you never know. I no. avoid the hill at all costs. Do you? Yeah. Uh, there is nothing pretty about politics, especially in 2018, where the word beautiful might have to be stricken from the dictionary. It is all ugly this year. <laughs> and so the end has come for the famous list of the 50 most beautiful people on Capitol Hill. Not that I wanted to see the Jeff Sessions swimsuit issue anyway. Like it or not, the hill is nothing but a bunch of cold, hard facts now. Or fake news. Fake news. <laughs> I don't like it one bit. This was really a big deal here in D.C. The it most was. after thing in D.C. power, more so than money. You got a lot of power if you made the top 10 ranking for this actual article. One of the uh, best sitcoms on TV, Veep, right. referenced it yeah. in one of their episodes. It's become that big of a crossover that Hollywood acknowledged that the Hills yeah. list of 50 when most beautiful I, people mattered. When I was people. 23, 24, you'd go out in Georgetown. It used to be really big at the time. Girls would brag about it. Yeah. And what <laughs> ranking they had. Uh. I just laughed as I walked by. We live in a more partisan world than ever, but do we really need to politicize the death of a former first lady? Barbara Bush passed away earlier this week, and admittedly, the tributes have been pouring in from both sides of the aisle. But the anti-Trump left, who are always hungry to point out the current president's shortcomings or mistakes just couldn't pass up the opportunity to criticize when they could. This time, it was the reaction to a typo on the official White House statement about Bush's passing. People quickly just continued to retweet it and pounced on the fact that the date was 2017 instead of 2018. So like it or not, are people too quick to criticize this administration no. at the expense of values? No. They're not okay. because this administration is too quick to criticize literally everybody and everything. Mm -hmm. They have devolved it down to that level. But if your and criticism that's is why, that, they, that Trump does that, yeah. then why fight fire with fire? So what? I agree with you. Right. Right. Yeah. Which is the same conversation about should Comey have gone low at all yeah. when he could have taken the high road? Yeah. Or why are you leveling a lawsuit against Russia, the world, WikiLeaks, when you don't even know the facts of the whole thing? It seems like you're trying to get to a level that he wins. At. You're in so the I'm with your point. I agree with you. That is just a little error that means nothing, yes. and everybody knows it meant nothing, and yet people, to your point, are pouncing on something for no reason whatsoever. And as you just stated, we now live in a world where that's a big deal. Who can go low? Lower, I should right. say. I mean, that's why this is a Michelle hustle Obama today. isn't there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> go oh, high, wow. people. No, it was her great quote. Yeah, very much They so. go low, we go high. I actually admittedly liked that. But I look, if you hate President Trump, he did not authorize that going out. I mean, he might have authorized it. He did not deliver it electronically. A staffer did. It was a typo. It's I a know typo. Some great people in the White House press office. Yep. Just a 92 year old mother, wife, grandmother, great grandmother passed away. Can we just at least have some decency to honor that? Is it point. didn't say 1782. Like everybody chill out, okay? It was yeah. a minor it's, typo. Yeah. Right, right yeah. yeah. And I like it. No Relax. typo with that. When it comes to heroes, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Perhaps Superman or the Black Panther, but what about Batgirl or Wonder Woman? Although fictional characters, most people associate heroes with men. The same can be said for our concept of a hero in real life. Just recently, a hero was born when the pilot flying a commercial airline for Southwest Airlines landed a plane despite losing an engine while in mid-flight. At least one person was killed during the mishap. Nevertheless, the pilot was able to land the plane, saving more than 200 souls remaining on board. 
Word soon spread that the heroic pilot was a woman by the name of Captain Tammy Jo Schultz. Virtually all news coverage of the incident put the word female before pilot, which leads me to this. Why not call the hero captain simply a pilot? Remember Sully Sullenberger? Well, to whom Captain Schultz was compared to? Can we say he too was also a commercial airline pilot? He was also a hero that flew the plane in the Hudson River? We don't just say he's a male pilot, like it or not. You know, I actually am going to surprise you guys. I like it just because there are so few women. My father's a commercial airline pilot, and he would tell me back in the 80s, in the military, in the 90s, some of the hardships these women really faced because they were such a minority. So I actually want to give her kudos. I want to thank her. And I think in that, in this particular instance, I'm okay with it. She was well trained. She yeah. performed her job under dire circumstances. You can call her whatever you want. I don't know why we have to parse out how she is described. I don't think anyone is suggesting she has did anything wrong. I, I, I just this is another point of contention to your point about a typo where we're sitting here getting upset about how she was qualified after what she did. Mm -hmm. Why? But it was like, how who we cares? talked about her. Yeah. We being the media, yeah. we said. Yeah, but but the who's saying pilot. she's a villain? Like, I mean, well, not a villain, but she was just a pilot. Not only is she a pilot, she's a hero. Why okay. not we just say, hey, the okay. pilot? Okay, and she'll have plane. a movie called Tammy Joe, just like <laughs> Sully had a movie See, called Sully. Women can you fly know? planes. They just Susan can't park Sarandon cars very is, well uh, or Susan drive. Susan Sarandon, is, <laughs> right. Susan Sarandon is lining up to get the lead role of flying the plane in the movie about Tammy Joe. I, I don't know. Like, is that a mistake? Yeah, That's it's what a I, mistake is because it? we're not calling her a hero. We don't have to say female in front of pilot. She's a pilot and she's a hero. Exclamation Great. We point. just called her that 15 times. Can we move on now? <laughs> uh, here's one of those times where LeBron James might have preferred to shut up and dribble. When seconds after a big win, the most unpredictable question comes. Instead of, hey, tell me about that big win, it was more like, did you hear about this awful thing that happened while you were playing the Pacers? A TNT reporter got slammed on social media this week after asking LeBron about the death of San Antonio Spurs coach Greg Popovich's wife during the on-court post-game interview that didn't involve the Spurs. Fans accused the reporter of putting the Cavs star on the spot with that question, but even James would end up defending the reporter. He said he was not blindsided by this, and the reporter had warned him that she would ask him this question. So, like it or not, should social media be telling these reporters how to do their job? Hell no. Social media, it's <laughs> people in basements half the time. Yeah. Like, not you guys watching. I, I actually liked it because it was something of substance. It's the most famous NBA player, the most famous, arguably, NBA coach. It's a big story. And to get his question, it's better than 90% of the drivel we hear from sideline reporters. Hey, how okay. was the defense in the third quarter? Here's where the problem was. Yeah, okay? If you've it. seen this video, here's where the problem is. It looks like LeBron James didn't know yeah. the question was coming. Right. However, he admits he was told this. Therefore, on some level, he put on an act yeah. to suggest. Does that surprise you? Well, in this case, it did because it did throw her under the bus. It made her look like that right. she put him on the spot when she didn't. And that, I think, is where the problem was. Yeah. Had he said, thank you for asking me that question, or I did want to comment on this, knowing he knew already, I don't think it would have looked as poorly yeah. as it did. He had to back her up because it looked like yeah. she surprised him when she didn't. I mean, and LeBron that's why he came the out the next day and backed her up and said, hey, look, I knew about this the entire time. He's the king of drama, though. I mean, he's quoting Martin Luther King. <laughs> what? Starting the playoffs. I mean, he was acting. If he knew it, then he was acting. To he was point. acting. That was very dramatic. It was a weird place to be acting, too. Well, kudos for her. Yeah. She got a lot she of got, love. Yeah, she got a lot of buzz. <laughs> hey, back for a bad date or just a jerk? The internet divided over one woman's experience. Like it or not, we'll be right back. Let's go. I was going to ask Graham the last time he went on a date, but you're married here. No idea what dates do. Uh, 17 years. <laughs> wow. It's a good thing. But my wife and I like to describe it as we still go on dates. Well, that's good. Yeah. Happy marriage. Happy wife, happy life. Hey, picture this. Britt and I go out on a date. I know. Believe it. I have a great time. She's not as in into it, but instead of letting me know, she ghosts me. So would I be justified sending her a bill for dinner? That's the question that divided the Internet this week after a woman went viral with the exact situation. The 23-year-old admits she never texted the guy back, so after repeated attempts at a follow-up, well, he sent her an itemized invoice with a list of everything she ate and everything she drank. Even asked her to pay $40. Of course, she was outraged, but 
some people on social media say serves her right if she couldn't even be bothered to text him back. So like it or not, should she have paid up? Yep. <laughs> oh, wow. What? Yep. Okay. No. It's common courtesy. Hmm. Okay. The guy it's is supposed common... to pay for the date. Right. And then you're supposed to at least say I had a nice time even if you didn't. Okay. I, That's no, the way I, I have a rule here. about ghosting. So common courtesy. Ghosting is inappropriate on all levels. No, no, no. There's a I nice way to you. say I didn't have a nice time with you and we have no chemistry and goodbye, have a nice life. Not if it's a one date. I have a rule. If it's one, <laughs> hey there, <laughs> what if the I rule? dated you? <laughs> if it's one date or two dates, you you're not obligated to follow up because you don't even really know the person that well. If you go to three or more, you're dating them and you owe them some, some she common courtesy. She should have texted him back. At least say, hey, I'm not interested. I think it's low of him to actually send her a bill. Sore loser, come on, man, get over it. <laughs> that he <laughs> itemized. Yeah, it. come on. Gosh. Itemized, that's funny. <laughs> on the line right now is one of Britt's ex-boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> whether he ever Venmoed her. Actually, that's Could explain why I'm single, so. If Jordan Peele was around, we'd get one, put some words in his yeah. mouth, and play it for you right now. Everybody have a great weekend. Bye.